This video is going to show you how you can create a peripheral driver library in Android Think. We'll discuss just what is a driver library and the benefits of using one. Then we will take an Android Think's gesture sensor and convert it to a driver library. Let's get started. A driver library is a reusable piece of code that you can run to control a peripheral sensor or actuator at a higher level of abstraction without having to worry about how the peripheral works or its low level communication details. You can write them yourself or alternatively, Use driver libraries other people have written and published online. Here is an example of this higher level abstraction. Driver library method might be able to turn on an LED. That seems straightforward enough. However, if you didn't have a driver library to use, you might have to understand a bit more of the details and write a bit more code. Here you can see the communication is at the byte level and a lot more knowledge about the communication protocols used is needed. We're going to be making a driver library for the gesture sensor we used in the UART lesson. You don't need to have done this lesson, but here is the link just in case you want to check it out. OK, let's create a driver library. Here I have an Android Things project already set up in Android Studio. If you aren't sure how to get your project to this point, you can revisit the previous first app lesson for instruction. Now I am copying in the main activity from the ZX sensor lesson and deleting the extra code about flashing an LED. For our purposes, we will just write to Logcat. This project is now set up to talk to the ZX gesture sensor when you swipe left or right, a message is displayed in your logcat output. Looking at this code, you can see it's broken up into several parts. The code in the onCreate instantiates our sensor, and in onDestroy it tears it down. When the app is running, we start monitoring and stop monitoring for gestures in the onStart and onStop methods. The most interesting bit of code is this callback here. This receives the data packets from our sensor, figures out if they are a swipe gesture, and finally, if so, it prints out to Logcat. When creating a driver library, you'll want to hide this complexity from the end user and allow them to know in a simple way if a swipe has happened or not. Let's walk through the steps to get to that. First thing when creating a driver library is, you will want a demo project that uses the library so that you can try out and sanity test all of the features. Let's rename our app module to demo and use this as our playground. Now the driver library needs to live in a module as well. Let's create a new one. Select Android module from the list. This allows us to create a library that can be used by other Android applications. This new library module needs the usual Android Things tweaks to make sure it is compatible. Add the Android Things support library dependency to the Gradle build file like this. And add the Android Things library requirement to the Android manifest like this. Next, we make the demo module depend on the library module so that the code we create inside the library can be accessed by the demo like so. Now we have the module set up, we need to separate the use of the ZX sensor peripheral for detecting gestures from the configuration and low level details of the communication between the peripheral and Android things. We start with creating a ZX sensor class. This will be used to hold all of the behavior in the driver library. It is also a straightforward and obvious name for clients of our library to understand. Whenever a client wants to use this library, they will go through this class, meaning that this is our public interface. Let's reference this ZX sensor class in our demo activity by creating a field. Now that we can start to see how the two modules will talk to each other. At the moment, the gesture sensor communication is opened in the onCreate method. We then configure the sensor for monitoring gestures. Let's wrap all of this into an open method. Move the open method to the library module. Notice how we pass in the UART pin address of the gesture sensor. This is because when creating a library, you want to be flexible and allow your client to tell you what pin address they are using. In other words, allow the use of multiple boards like the NXP Pico and the Raspberry Pi. We will pass the bus and the pin address to our ZX sensor constructor like so, as we will be using them later. In our demo main activity, we now delete the field for the UART device bus. This is because we are going to replace every call to this low-level bus with a call to our driver library. It will be red for now. This is okay, as we can use these compile errors to ensure we complete all changes. Now that we have opened a connection to our driver library in onCreate, we should make sure we close the connection in the Android lifecycle symmetrically matching pair. Therefore, let's fix the code in the onDestroy method. Abstracting away from the details of the bus, the onDestroy method wants to simply call close like this. Now we can move this close method to our driver library. Looking at the demo, onStart and onStop methods, the code is very low level, registering for UART callback. Let's replace this with a more obvious high-level abstraction that talks about gesture detection. In the onStart, we will have a start listening for gestures method, and in the onStop, a stop listening for gestures method, like so. 
Now we move these methods to the ZX Sensor driver library. I would normally use the refactoring tools as much as possible, but when I tried before with this method, it messes up more than it helps. So here we use simple copy and paste. Once you have moved them, remember to call them in the demo activity like this. When we detect gestures, our callback will send a message to Logcast. Let's also wrap these in method calls and move them into the demo activity. The callback here is currently unused. As you can see, this is the details of how we know if a gesture has happened or not. Let's now move this field to the ZX Center driver library. When you can do this, it also means we can move the constants from the main activity as well. Now that we are detecting gestures in the ZX sensor, we need to inform the main activity that they occurred. Let's create a listener interface that defines this communication. It should be very explicit in what we are sending, so having methods called onSwipeLeft and onSwipeRight is perfect. Let's create an instance of this listener interface as a field and have our gesture callback invoke the methods on it when the movement is detected. Finally, we need a way to set this listener from the main activity. Creating a setter is the simplest way we can do that with this code. Using this set listener method in our demo activity allows us to get notified when gestures are detected. Let the activity implement the listener with this code. That's it. You have created a driver library that abstracts away the details of gesture detection on the ZX Center peripheral using UART. As you can see, the main activity knows nothing of the low-level communication, but still knows how to monitor and react to gestures. Driver libraries are a powerful way to make full use of a peripheral without having to know or understand all of the low-level communication involved.